Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> School days makes me homesick. My country tis of thee, sweet, sweet land of liberty. Of liberty. You know, sometimes you make me feel that if I hadn't up and married you, you would still be at school. <laughs> Learning my reading, writing, and arithmetic. <laughs> I'm pretty good at reading and writing. And pretty bad at arithmetic. Well, it's a man's work anyway. Say, did Mr. Reynolds say to meet him in front of the school at 9 o'clock? That's what he said. Well, he's late. Select man, you know that really is a funny name to call... David, just what would you call Mr. Reynolds, what he is? Mayor, I guess. Well, then why do you call him... They don't like to call him mayor. Because in the early days, when they were really practicing democracy up here in New England, they, they didn't like titles. They didn't like men to get too big for their breeches. David, Mr. Selectman, Mayor of Eastbrook, Reynolds has arrived. Hey, Mr. Norton, Mr. Norton. Uh, good morning, Mr. Reynolds. Hey, well, well, you're here on time. Certainly admire people who are punctual. We were waiting for you. You say that pleasant, ma'am, but you say it like I was late. <laughs> By George, I am late. Five minutes past nine. Yep. Oh, I got held up my Mort Tucker down the street. Mort's out of work, and his wife is out of victuals, and his kids is out of shoes, and Mort was out to go fishing. <laughs> I exchanged him a shovel for his fish bowl and set him on the town truck. And now Mrs. Mort Tucker will have something to eat besides fish, and the little Tuckers will have shoes. And the town of Eastbrook will get some road mending done. <laughs> Mort Tucker's a good man on the end of a shovel. He's got what it takes, strong back. Oh, Mort's all right, but he's kind of shiftless. Well, it's us don't be shiftless. There's the site for the new school building across the street. Um, just what kind of a building did you have in mind, Mr. Reynolds? Well, when you've got yourself an architect, and he's a good architect, a smart man sort of sits back and lets him come up with his own ideas. And George Reynolds is just as smart as the next man. Well, that's very flattering, Mr. Reynolds, but I'm pretty busy at the moment. I, I don't know whether I should undertake a new job, or I'll have the time to undertake it. Most elastic thing there is, Mr. Norton, is time. You may have to stretch it a bit, but the world's full of time. Just plumb full of time. I learned a lesson years ago, Mr. Norton. When you want to get a job done, you go to a busy man. He'll get it done for you. Well, you seem to have disposed of my life pretty completely, Mr. Reynolds. <laughs> There's one point uh, to be determined. Just what kind of a building do you want to erect? And would I be the best man for the job? After all, I, I've never built a school before. There ain't very many as has, Mr. Norton. There are an awful lot of schools, Mr. Reynolds. Lots of school buildings, Mrs. Norton. I'm not so certain how many of them are schools. Now, there's a fine point of distinction there, Mr. Reynolds. But you must have some ideas in mind, Mr. Reynolds. A few, a few. i got a piece of paper here with the details on it. Five hundred children. Five hundred, so many. Town's growing, Mrs. Norton. Town's growing. <laughs> Nobody ought to be aware of that more than you. <laughs> Seems like every young couple in the town, when they got nothing better to do, they up and have themselves a child. <laughs> I guess there's not much better they can do. Makes for a good, thrive, and grow in town. A school for 500 children. Yes. This year paper sort of lays out what we decided we need. So many rooms, an auditorium, gymnasium, playgrounds. Mm -hmm. It's all here. A lot of new fangled things. I don't hold with all of them, but they say it's progress. Playgrounds and gymnasiums and auditoriums are necessary to a good school, Mr. Reynolds. Can't be just school rooms. So they say, Mrs. Norton. I'm a little old-fashioned, I guess. I got some ideas about a school. Well, that's what you'd better talk to me about, Mr. Reynolds. Your ideas. There was a wise man who once said, The greatest school there is is a log. Yep, that's just what he said. A log? Yeah, a log. With a student on one end of it, and a great teacher on the other. Couldn't be no finer school than that. Mark Hopkins said that. Old Mark did, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah, smart man. Well, we got kids enough and logs to spare. But we're sort of shy on great teachers for the other end of them. Might be a little drafty and damp in this ideal school of yours, Mr. Reynolds. Might be, might be. But a good education is worth a little inconvenience. Howsomever, we ain't got enough teachers to go around on that system, so we'll build us some rooms 
And then we can set 20 kids on this imaginary, hypothetical log, and the best teacher we can find on the other end. <laughs> and just what style of architecture do you have in mind, Mr. Reynolds? That, young man, is up to you. That's your department. But I aim it'll be something I'll like when we get through. I think I've got the idea. You don't care very much what it is, as long as you like it. Yeah. <laughs> That would be a way of stating it, Mr. Norton. <laughs> but I have an idea we'll see eye to eye on things. That's why I'm talking to you. And if we don't? I can be convinced. If a buddy can make me think I'm wrong. Well, that's fair enough, David. <laughs> Does the name East Haddam mean anything to you two young people? You mean here in Connecticut? Yeah, up on the Connecticut River. Yes. David, we drove through, through there one day this spring. Yes, I remember. We did. The road bears left up over the hill. Mm, yeah, we, we stopped there and filled up with gas. Mm. Did you notice? The little red schoolhouse back in the fields on the edge of the bluff? As a matter of fact, being an architect, I did notice it. A low sweeping roof looked like it had been built in the 18th century. That's right. You didn't go up and look at it? No, we were in a hurry to get back home. That's too bad. And you didn't see the sign up there on the side of it? No. No, we didn't. But I hardly think the style of architecture could be adapted to the building that you have in mind for Eastbrook. Looked like a one-room schoolhouse. Every schoolhouse is a one-room schoolhouse. I ain't talking about styles of architecture. I'm talking about building a school. I think I'm beginning to follow you, Mr. Reynolds. But Mr. Reynolds, when my son goes to school, I, I, I want him to have all the advantages that we've accumulated through the years. You have, Mrs. Norton, but... What George Reynolds is worrying about is that we don't leave out any of the virtues and advantages that don't appear on the surface. But I still don't see what the connection is between a, a, a one-room red schoolhouse and this big new school you're thinking uh, about. Let Mr. Reynolds go on, Claudia. I think he has something in the back of his mind he wants to say. Out of that little red schoolhouse, Mrs. Norton, for close to 200 years, a lot of fine people came, both in front of the teacher's desk and... From behind but it. But not because it was a one-room red school No, house. but I, I know what Mr. Reynolds means. It was an idea, and an ideal of education. Yeah. That little schoolhouse was a burning torch in the wilderness. It was the core and the heart of the community. It stood for equal opportunity and freedom and a way of life. And it taught those things that were worth dying for to get and to keep. You're still talking about just that little red schoolhouse? Yes, sir. It's too bad you and Mr. Norton didn't have climbed that hill and looked at that schoolhouse. You know what you would have seen on the sign beside the door? What would we have seen, Mr. Reynolds? The sign says, In this building, in the years just before the Revolutionary War, Nathan Hale taught school. Nathan Hale? Mm. I've always thought of him as a story in a history book. Not flesh and blood. A neighbor, almost. In a little schoolhouse just a little way away in East Haddam. And he taught well, ma'am. Yes, he taught some lessons worth learning and remembering. Down the hill from the schoolhouse is a graveyard. And in it there's graves for a lot of men who studied at those lessons and went out and died so that other men might not lose the chance to learn them too. Yes, ma'am. Lessons that men will die for is pretty important lessons to teach. But Mr. Reynolds, buildings, just, just buildings won't do that for men. Maybe, maybe not. But what goes into buildings will, the individuals and the communities that get together and build their schools, what their schools mean to them. That's where the lesson begins. And I aim for we shouldn't leave that out of our new school. I think I see what you mean. Mm. We got us an honor roll here in front of the school. A lot of gold stars. Too many gold stars. Read the names, Mrs. Norton. Arnold Benjamin. His people descended from the traitor. Guess that debt's paid. Babcock, Peter. His people's got their farm up about two miles from you. Canzoni, Anthony. His father works for the railroad. Malawaski, Eugene. Mm. He lived just two farms below you. Went to school in a little one-room schoolhouse on the river road. Roshmeyer, Hans. Good boy. They ran a little store on a farm. Father hardly speaks English. Mother doesn't speak it at all. Good people. I guess you'd say they're good Americans, too. Reynolds, George. Mr. Reynolds, your son? Yes, Georgie. He was a good boy, too. I, um, <clears throat> I see what you mean, Mr. Reynolds, but it's not easy to build the things you've been talking about with stone and mortar. You do your part. You make it an honest building. 
simple and honest, and set it on the ground like it belonged there and meant to stay there come hell or high water. I'll try. You do that, and the community and all of us will try to do the rest. Yes, we'll do our share, and we'll make some fine citizens. I'd like to have a share in this undertaking. Well, ma'am, you're just bulging over with your share. Another kid to bring up in a fine town and a fine country. I'd like to do more. We'll put you in the Parent Teachers Association. I guess I can almost qualify. <laughs> You'll qualify before the next meeting. I don't know nothing about human nature or expectant mothers. <laughs> well, you've got specifications of what we want, Mr. Norton. You draw us up some plans and call me. I'll Maybe try I... to make the kind of a school you want, Mr. Reynolds. He's a fine man, Mr. Reynolds. David, this is a fine town. And a fine country privilege to bring a child into it. I just don't hold with the pessimists and the disillusioned, people who say we've come to the end of the road. But David, the road is just beginning. Those, uh, those gold stars on the honor roll, and the names be behind them that you were reading a few minutes ago, they say that, that sometimes you have to pay a pretty big price for it. Walking that road. Should we ever have to pay that price, David? Let's do our share. To be sure that it will be worth it. And Mr. Reynolds looked at his son's name there and said, Georgie, he was a fine boy. He seemed sort of certain that it was worth it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is the season for graduation parties, for weddings, all sorts of festivities. And this is a good moment to suggest that Coca-Cola belongs at any party, formal or informal, indoors or out. When you think of hospitality, you think of Coca-Cola, because Coke makes people welcome anytime, any place. How's your supply? Hadn't you better get Coke today? Fine young man, that David Norton. Fine young man. Glad you like him, Mr. Reynolds. He's going to build Eastbrook a fine schoolhouse. We're lucky to have him. You bet you are. Are the uh, Nortons really pleased with living up in this part of the country? Very pleased. They feel it's home, though there are still a great many surprises for them. Hmm? On Monday, for instance, it suddenly occurs to Claudia that... Uh... Now, Mr. Reynolds, do you lock your door at night? Oh, I haven't. Uh, no, in 20 years. And after Monday night, I don't think Claudia ever will again. Locking the front door brings too much trouble. Locking the door brings trouble. <laughs> That's a new one, so I'll be around Monday. So long, Mr. King. So long, Mr. Reynolds. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.